down, take your piece from the ground. Follow that ox for the world. They try to make their house as small as possible and utilizing most of the land for nurturing green. So they will they will uh, plant different types of vegetables, fruits. They will have flowers. They will have gardens and so on and so forth. So that is the element of cultural greenery. The sixth element is spiritual greenery. So today we uh, so whenever we talk about spirituality, then the spiritual greenery. Uh, what is very really interesting about this aspect is that there is a very interesting blend of spirituality and rationality in it so what we find in spiritual greenery is that they believe that their gods or goddesses not just lie inside the temples they are not just for you know uh, those images those uh, spirituality is not all about worshiping gods and goddesses inside a particular building structure or inside a particular room in order to gain or to taste the real essence of spirituality, they believe that respect, trust, hope, dependence, de devotion first should begin with nature. So that's why if we go across, even in India, we have ample of examples. If you go into the tribal belts, especially in the tribal parts of the country where they worship a particular tree as a particular deity, they worship a particular river as a particular deity. They worship a particular mountain as a particular deity. So similar fashion, this is the spiritual greenery. They worship, they have certain trees, they have certain forest lands, they have certain mountain areas, they have certain rivers, which we, they will never touch. Just that because they have to construct a road. If even a construction of a road stops because of the existence of the tree, they will agree with that. But they will never chop off that tree to construct a road or to construct a building out there. Now, all these together, all these practices, if these practices can be adopted in our daily life in an individual and collective basis, it also contributes towards aesthetic greenery as well. That is, you know, we try to, now the notion of beauty, what is the notion of beauty in the modern world? Now, whether we talk about physical beauty, intellectual beauty, you know, whether we talk about you know, all forms of beauty, mostly we see, I'm not generalizing, but mostly we see that in the modern world, it is very mechanical in nature. Everything is artificial and we are always rushing towards, you know, shortcuts towards everything. So to understand the real, to understand the differences and what is happening is we are failing to understand the differences between appearance and reality. So aesthetic greenery, which we can adopt from nature enables us to understand the differences between appearance and reality. So what is happening today? We find ample of examples that, you know, natural areas, green areas are being chopped off. Instead, they are constructing artificial green parks. Then natural areas, natural rivers are being blocked and choked and they are being polluted. And then we have art artificial construction of rivers. So, you know, to come out of this artificiality of this modern existence, the artificiality of knowledge that is being disseminated, that is being syringed within us in the contemporary era, I think aesthetic greenery is in a way to counter that. And the eighth one is the moral greenery. And by now we know, like keeping in all these greeneries, all the seven aspects that we have briefly reflected upon till now, we can easily understand that how it contributes towards the moral growth of an individual as well as as a collective person as well. Now, uh, the, the point is, what is important is now how the, uh, now with respect to this, I come to the second part, the second portion uh, of my reflection that how this green school initiative, which is also a part of green pedagogy, that how nature teaches us on an on an everyday basis and how the teaching we can share along with each other. What is important is that nowadays uh, we find that we are more interested in knowledge production, a kind of capitalistic exercise rather than knowledge dissemination. We all want to be the producers of knowledge. We act like, you know, producers, we act like machines. And what we want is once that productive knowledge or the produced knowledge is being challenged, by any other authentic versions of knowledge, we immediately try to generate a hierarchy and subdue the various other forms of knowledges. 
so green school through green school the green pedagogy that i briefly reflected upon you know plays a pivotal role in that part now coming very briefly to the second part of my reflection which is going to be the concluding part of my reflection so now obvious question arises how this green school element is actually or has been contributing towards uh towards the situation of towards controlling or impacting upon the situation of covid-19 in bhutan right now and how it can be a very uh, strong phenomenon of uh, you know in the in the post covid era as well across the world so the first is the first thing is when covid-19 started we saw that how people have been going crazy about holding food stocks you know holding different types of elements for their home just going out of you know out of control without any reason in bhutan there was no scenario like this first of all because of green school as i mentioned earlier that almost not almost in fact each and every household has their own vegetable garden they have their own uh you know own uh, livestock they have their own places to you know have different types of fruits and vegetables say so they don't don't have to panic about the fact that if tomorrow there are no vegetables in the market what i'm supposed to do because still if one visits the rural areas in bhutan there is a still culture of there is a strong culture of barter system of exchange so still you will see houses for example if i have 3 kilos of rice i'll exchange with my neighbor over 3 kilos of vegetables so which is again a very strong concept of you know green learning a strong notion of green pedagogy that is teaching oneself and each other with respect to nature and this is how nature also pays back fruitfully that is you don't have to panic about the second is as i mentioned that we didn't have this problem of hoarding of goods and still even the government has also mentioned that for the next 6 months at least if not more for the next 6 months we have sufficient food stock we have sufficient life stock to feed the entire population even if there are a scenario comes that there will be no import of vegetables and foods or any other items from india bhutan has it enough stock and one of the major contributing factor is the green school initiative number three is no community transmission now when we if we look into the topography of bhutan you will see that if you even read out you will see that it's 60 to 65% of the country is covered with forest and rest of the parts are residential areas now having said that when a nation is covered with 60 to 65% of forest so you can understand how small the residential areas are so in mountains we already know we have a scattered population in mountains we already know that we have a scattered uh, you know set settlement people don't live very closely to each other apart from that because of this topographical structure what happened is we find that people cannot just move or gather or create a commotion so easily as we find in the cities in the cities it's so easy to travel take a car we have a highway we have a you know uh, you know very good roads and etc and we can travel but that has a negative impact as well and we have already seen that how gathering can create a problem but with respect to bhutan it's a very challenging thing with respect to topographical structure so obviously because we never had any community transmission there was no question of country wide lockdown yes obviously we took basic measures for instance uh, we are conducting online classes we are not having physical contact classes uh, we are not allowed to you know visit the uh visit the religious sites for example most of the monasteries uh which are about to get open again or from the first of uh, ne next month so obviously you know apart from these perspectives you know we didn't feel like or we never panicked that if tomorrow next morning i'll wake up and i might be the next victim of covid-19 as i've been hearing from my friends in the next in their in their 500 meters they have 30 infections in their 1 km periphery of 1 km they have 110 infected so one wakes up with that panic that maybe tomorrow i am the person who is going to get infected with this particular disease but here because of protecting preserving learning and sharing with and from nature these you know these problems these challenges could be successfully evaded so to coming to the final concluding aspect that we see with respect to this arguments with respect to this perspectives i believe that this green pedagogy can be a very phenomenal weapon 
to counter not only this particular pandemic, because in the near future, we are sure that more pandemics are about to come. In the near future, this green pedagogy can be a long-term solution towards encountering the pandemics in the near future. And interestingly, many countries have already started adopting as well, Australia, Canada. In fact, there was a meeting in Kanpur and Lucknow as well last year with respect to adopting green pedagogy locally with respect to the schools and colleges. So I'll stop here and uh, thank you so much once again for you know giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sayan, uh, Dr. Sayan Day. <clears throat> you have uh, been a very uh, you know great ambassador of uh, Bhutan, I'm sure. If your Bhutanese are listening to you, they will know that you have uh, almost motivated all of us to come there. And I'm sure most of our students are going to join your university, so beware. On a lighter note, uh, on a, uh, this, that was on a lighter note. On a serious note, I think you touched upon something uh, very basic to what education is all about, about integrating yourself with the environment. And if education, Madam, education is... Hello? Madam? Yes? Tell him that I have visited Bhutan and I liked it very much. All the things in Bhutan are nature. Same yes. I Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, yes, sir. sir. I... Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So you see that you already have a fan That's following. <laughs> All right. And yes, uh, we are a knowledge based system. What do you think? I mean, I'll be taking one of the questions for you right away, uh, Sayan, because you're on the uh, line uh, right now. One of the students has been asking us, uh, she said, uh, this is Yukti. He said, is there a lack of ethical education in our educational institutions from school to colleges that we somehow have not been able to adapt to this that was taught to us by our rishis and munis, by our, you know, uh, forefathers, that you have to integrate yourself with mother nature. There is no other learning better than, you know, your own uh, perception of being a part of that big universal whole. So this kind of an education, when it is missing in our schools and uh, homes, I think that brings us to this consumerist, uh, you know, mindset where we are not able to really appreciate the gifts that have been given to us. One is that. And the second question is from another student who says, is this not possible in India because of the population? Is it the population which is, you know, restricting you to not go green in your, in your pedagogy? So these are the two questions I would like you to address, uh, Dr. Sayande. Sure. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for asking this uh, very uh, interesting set of questions. The first one is the question of ethics. I uh, kind of agree with you because see what happens, especially, and I'll, I'll just give you some very practical examples. I'm not going to go into any theory or philosophy or quote anybody. At our homes, and when I refer to family and homes, I'm not talking of what my mother and father or my grandparents taught to me, but I'm talking of my generation, like people of my age who are becoming father and mother. The point is there lies a lot of ignorance in ethical learning. And most importantly, because of you know technocentric learning or maybe because of so much so much of ideology centric learning what is happening is the praxis is becoming highly questionable so obviously uh, a child might take birth in a very big apartment must be staying in a very big complex which that complex might have beautiful gardens and might have you know wonderful uh, wonderful swimming pool and might have a wonderful gathering place and so on and so forth but what is missing is that the child is failing to learn in the process that how to preserve or how to protect the natural environment. Now, in our childhood days, or even mostly in the time of our parents and grandparents, we used to hear a lot of stories from them. We have a bit of experience of that as well, but very bit of experience that they were born and brought up in a natural rural environment. And they learned about trees, animals, birds, time, space, everything from nature. In the ancient time, uh, people tried to find direction by looking at the position of the stars. 
how many of us in the present generation except arsa minor and arsa major because we have to mark them in the examination except those how many of us can just sit and just at one go recognize all the position of the stars in the sky many can do but sorry to say i am ashamed to say i also cannot do why because i have learned i have studied mostly with respect to my bookish knowledge i have learned them i have vomited them on my, on my answer sheets i have got good grades my story was over so why i brought this question because there comes the question of ethics you see the ethical element of learning is completely missing in this perspective now ethics comes with praxis that why do we need to protect the environment we cannot just sit in the laboratory we cannot sit in the bedroom or we just cannot sit in front of the television in a national geographic channel and did discover each channel and learn we have to be right in the natural environment and today when i sit in bhutan and today when i experience i feel myself so lucky that amidst this such a crisis when people are where where trees are being chopped off where nature is being destroyed rampantly for the construction of so called for the development of so called development and modernity here the central focus is always towards nature nothing is going to take place at the cost of nature if there is a situation where human and nature comes into conflict nature will be by default given more preference the major prefer uh, preference over human civilization that is the ethics of learning and today we see that if we protect nature what we get back in return some of the examples i said so yes going back to your question of ethics yes the ethical process of learning is very much missing because ethics comes with praxis we are learning ethics but it is more of text based and hardly of any context based and coming to the second question population see population my answer for this will be both yes and no yes is obviously a factor i mean if you have less population against this i'll set up bhutan as an example with just 7.5 to 8.5 lakhs of people which must be a po uh, po population of a particular state in india with just 7.5 to 8.5 lakhs of people in a country obviously we can see that how very successfully and also very effectively community transmission can be avoided number 1 number 2 population outburst is obviously a reason because with growing number of people we need more residential areas to stay but at the same time it is also up to us it is also widely you know depending upon our own self that how we look forward to nurture and protect nature because growing population is a problem but also what we are facing is the growing number of senseless insensible population that is another major issue now for example in india not on a pan country basis pan indian basis but you have multiple examples where you have green schools in india as well for example if i give you one example in the in kerala you have attapadi district where there is this very interesting place called sarang school now this sarang school if you go there now obviously the first concept as i said if you have a school we expect that we will have a campus we will have a building we will have a playground we will have a canteen etc but sarang school is a massive massive piece of land with people you know where each and everything houses are built from natural elements student hostels are built from natural element science labs are out in the nature art labs are out in the nature and each and everything whatever they learn and share they learn and share from nature and learning and sharing from nature are actually making them much more practically impactful as compared to the people who earn a lot of degrees and medals and then join an institution to work because they were questioned because their their effectiveness of education their practical effectiveness of education was highly questioned and now the students who are passing out of those places out of that particular institution or out of that per particular idea i must say because it is not an institution it's an idea they are becoming more and more practically enabled as compared to people who are having degrees 
so obviously population control is required but also the existing population need to be very sensible and for that we need to be self reflective because our major problem is unburden responsibility and blame somebody so if my if i if i don't have something here i blame the neighborhood so we always are you know kind of intertwined in a kind of consistent blame game so we have to you know come out of this kind of you know habit and self reflect self question and indulge ourselves voluntarily into this collective act thank you so much uh, dr sayan <clears throat> i hope that has answered the questions